As days start getting shorter and the air becomes cooler, many anglers decide to put their gear away for the year. However, during the winter time, many fly fishermen are rewarded with some of the best trout fishing of their lives. Trout fishing in the winter time is perfect for anglers who want to have streams for themselves with the opportunity of having great days on the water. Yes, fly hatches do slow down a lot, but aquatic life is still thriving under the surface of the water, with trout feeding on crustaceans, larvae, worms, bait fish, and eggs from the recent spawn. I've had some of my best outings during the winter, and when you can bundle up and have fun on the water, it really pays off. Got one. Oh, on the nymph. I'm stripping in the squirmy with a caddis under it. I got one. Oh, come on. Get back into the net. Let me show this fish to the camera. First fish of the day. It's out of the beaver pond. Didn't get any in the creek. But I mean, look at that fish. They're small, but they are so beautiful. Hey, come on, let me show you the camera. The water here is freezing. There's literally skim ice. Would you look at that fish? Such a pretty fish, it's insane. State fish of Pennsylvania. Just being out here and having the chance to catch these is just a bonus. It's beautiful out here in this beaver pond. It's not even that cold, I took my hat and gloves off. Let me get this beautiful trout out of here. See ya, buddy. Got one. Let's go. First cast with the indicator. Let me get this guy. Come on. Dude, damn, it's freezing. I want to move a bit shallower. Here's that brookie that took that midge. You can see it right there, bottom of the mouth. Let me focus on it. Yeah, he took that super small midge. This is a beautiful fish. It's up, and I dropped him. As water temps drop and the air cools, I like to find deeper and slower water where I will usually find a hungry trout waiting for food to float past it. I use midges, worm imitations, and nymphs in the deeper water to entice a strike out of a hungry trout. Using flies with hot spots is also usually a great way to get a picky trout to eat during the winter time. God, I'm fighting this fish horribly. Oh, there we go. Get another nice little brook trout. Third one of the day. Finally, one took the squirmy. I was wondering if that was going to work today. It is actually freezing outside, though. I don't know how much longer I can stand this. <clears throat> After each fish... I've been having to take like 10 minutes to warm my hands up. Right here. Let me try not to drop this one in like the last. Get a good video of it. Okay. There's the small little brook trout I just got on the squirmy. The water is freezing. After putting my hands in it for one second, I already can't feel them. But I'm going to try to get an underwater release of this fish. Just because they're cool. Let's see. Oh, that is a big fish. 
biggest rookie of the day. Let's go. That is a nice brookie. Damn. See, that's what I've been persisting for all day out here. I knew there was a reason I was standing out here in this freezing weather. And he took that little ass caddis. That's a nice brookie. Let me show off this nice fat. Oh, this brookie is fat. My hands are freezing. But damn, this brookie is worth it. <clears throat> Look at that brick trout. Thing is massive. The thing's like nine, ten inches, and it's got girth too. Such a beautiful fish. Let me get pictures of it. Damn, there's that nice, big old fat brookie I just got. Let me get an underwater release of this fish. That fish feels a bit better. Not a bad little brookie. Here. It's probably second biggest of the day. I don't feel like pulling my net out. Way too cold. Stop squirming. I should take my gloves off. It's cold, but it's more important to respect these fish, so. Let's do this. Whoa. And my hands are getting wet again. It's not a bad fish at all. Oh, my second, okay, never mind. I thought he was hooked by the second fly in the ass, but he wasn't. Nice squirmy eater. Not a bad trout. Let's get him out of here. You ready, buddy? You can go whenever. My hands are getting cold. There you go. I can still see him out there. Let's see if we can get him more of this. This hole seems to be good. I fished since nine o'clock and it's almost like one now. And this is the only hole that's been producing a lot of fish. Got like one in that hole back there. And then like one in like a 300 foot stretch. These beaver ponds were way better in the summer, but maybe the fish are just further up right now. I don't know, I'll have to see. There's another one, back to back. Okay, gloves aren't coming off for this guy. Come on. Stop. Okay, oh my God. It is so tangled in my line now. Okay, what got out of here? Look at the mess that just made in my line. Go. Nice one on the caddis. What am I talking about, caddis? Each time I've said caddis, I just realized I meant uh, scud. Let me get this hook out of this fish's mouth. Pliers are coming in handy in the winter time. It's not a bad trout. Nice December brookie. I've had a pretty nice day for it flooding here. Like insanely less than a week ago. So the main reason I wanted to come up here and fish the big Lehigh um, for trout, but it's all flooded. So I have to do with little tributaries and stuff for right now. Oh, not the best hookup with that fish. But hey, not a bad looking fish. Let me get him over here. Grab that squirmy. Oh, come on. Stop squirming. Oh. There's that fish. Don's a male, I can tell by that kite. 
to get him out of here. Okay. Just trying to not have to touch this guy. Now the second flies in his mouth as well. Come on. There he goes. I'm gonna try to do that a bunch, unless they're a nice fish. Just because I don't want to get my hands freezing again. Let's go. Looks like the bites picked up all of a sudden because I wasn't getting bites for like the first three hours I was here. In the past hour, I've gotten like, what is this? Probably like 10. Might be overestimating a bit, but let me get this fly out of his mouth. Oh, that wasn't even the fly in his mouth. It's the lines wrapped around his jaw. Hold up. Cold, cold, cold. Look at that, there's ice up there forming on the sticks over the water. Oh, big chunk of ice just fell down. Did you look at that? Ice. And brookie. Nice colors. I love brook trout colors. They're probably my favorite looking trout. Let's get them out of here. There he goes. There we go. It's not a bad little brookie. This creek's average is pretty big. I've gotten like a majority of like six, seven inches. This one's pushing eight. That one I got was probably like nine, ten. But yeah, that's not a bad trout at all. Let me show him to the camera. Not a bad little trout out of that hole right there. Oh, he's about to slip. Super cool looking fish. Let me get him out of there. There's one. I'll get the net out for this guy. This one's got nice colors. I mean, they all do, but this one's got like this purple, bluish dots, the halos around them. Looks so cool. Would you look at that nice? Okay. I was about to show you guys his colors, but plop back in. It's a little not too bad of a trout. Euronymphing. I don't euronymph too often. I usually indicator fish or nymph. But I'm going to give this a try because next summer I want to do more of this. Oh, he came off. Okay. Go. Nice little waterfall brookie. I'm just gonna show him off through the net. Nice little waterfall brookie. Let's see if we can get another one out of here. That's a horrible net job, but it's his first fish I've gotten above that waterfall. I was starting to think there are no fish here, and then I came up on this fishy ass pool under the telephone wires. Or electric wires, I don't even know what they are. Not not a bad looking trout. This one's got a lot of yellow dots. I ain't seeing any blues really on him, but he's got nice reds. Nice yellows. See that dorsal fin? 
No, he's not gonna poke it up. I can't get my, okay. Whatever, let me just get this boy out of here. See ya. Ooh, this one looks nice. Dark colors on him. Damn, I'm taking out the camera for this guy. If my line stops getting in my way. Okay, I've just made it worse. <sighs> nice brook trout. Super nice looking brook trout. Let's get him out of here. There's another one. This hole is producing a ton of fish. This one also doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't gonna use the net, but now I'm just using it on the land. The hell is this? Okay. They're all taking the squirmy. Barely getting any on the nymph today. I mean, can't complain, fish is a fish. Okay. This fish just wrapped itself so badly in my line. Another beauty out of this hole. I've noticed that the fish that I'm getting out of this hole are a lot darker than they were further down below that waterfall. I wonder if the waterfall has something to do with that. Okay, my GoPro just died, but got this little guy on the Euronymph. We'll get him out of here. But yeah, when I'm winter trout fishing, I want to look for holes like this that you can tell are a bit deeper and slower than areas like that. And again, I'll show you guys in a bit when I'm walking back to get picked up. But like up there, I wouldn't fish. In this area, I'd start about here. Fish this area, got that trout like right under that tree branch. And overall, you just want to look for deeper, slower moving pools. Where, like, in the summertime, you might catch trout in this stuff. But right now, there really is super low of a chance of a trout being in there. So, like, I'm looking up and I don't think I see any more good holes either way for a bit. So, I'm probably just going to finish this fishing this hole. And I'll show you guys what I look for in a winter hole over in that direction as well. Okay, continuing what I was saying about a wintering trout hole, a hole like this would be ideal. So you can see up there, it's fast, still fast, still fast, and then boom. You can see it drop off, the water starts to deepen, and all in this stretch, I'd expect like a bunch of trout to come out of it. Of course, when I got here, I walked through it because I got snagged over there and I didn't feel like losing it. But a hole like this is exactly what you're looking for. So you can see if... If I walk a bit this way, there's this hole right here. You see those bubbles on top of the water? That's always a good sign. And then you can just tell, like right here, it's gonna get deep, but I would not fish this fast water. I'd fish right out there, right outside of it. And right back there is where I pulled all the trout out of. So what I'm saying does work. I'm not just making bullshit up right now. But that's all the fishing I'm doing for today. Um, I had a pretty good day here on the creek, especially for the beginning being so slow. It really picked up. I probably caught like what? I'll throw a number up, but I think it was like 18, 20 fish. Um, it was fun, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, tight lines in the meantime.